if you ever thought of quitting your nine to five jobs to become a freelancer, this video is for you. In my work with people who failed to become freelancer, I usually see two scenarios. Scenario one falls into those people who dreams about it, talks about it, but never make any practical step towards achieving it. Scenario two falls into those people who do it impulsively without proper guidance. This video will show you how to avoid both mistakes. Make a solid plan, execute it, become a successful freelancer, and enjoy this wonderful lifestyle. Let me show you how to do it in five simple steps. Let's begin with pick your areas of expertise. I know it sounds logical, but you'd be surprised that a lot of people have a big idea of what they actually want to do it. They all have a pretty good idea about the parts of freelancing lifestyle, but a lot of them don't even know how actually they want to do it. If you love what you do, it's settled for you. In that case, what you want to achieve is being your own boss and earn more money. If you do not know what you want, this is the time to do some strategic thinking. The million dollars question is, is there something that you love at your work that can bring more money to the table? Let's say Amongst other tasks at your company, you are doing photo editing at your corporation and you just love it. So you decided to offer services as a photo editor. Is it time to quit your job? Not yet, because you haven't established yourself as an expertise in your area. That takes us to step number two, which is to gain skills needed in your area of expertise. Again, it's settled if you will be offering same services, but be careful if you are a part of a big company. In that case, you need to make sure the services you're offering are in demand even you offer them individually and as not part of the big group. You can easily check it out on posts such as Paper Hour, Fiverr, or Upwork. For example, programmers can easily transition their job from working for a company to working as a freelancer. Studying from scratch, you need to establish yourself as an expertise in your area of specialties. Enrolling a new course or a crash course to learn a new trade to gain a certificate. For all of you with busy schedule, consider to dedicate at least one or two hours per day to learn a new trade. Aim for continuity, not volume. Persistence will take you far. So, is it time to declare independence and dedicate to freelancing? Not yet, because you do not have steady stream of income. That's why you need to start small. This is where the fun begins. You can bring your services online to Fiverr, People Pay Per Hour, or Upwork. If you are unsure of how to pull it off, 
you can watch my last video on becoming a digital freelancer. So why aren't you transitioned to freelancing yet? Most people make the first mistake of quitting their job to start as a freelancer. After initial success, some of the freelancers start accepting lousy clients and low-paying gigs to pay their bills. Ironically, they hated freelancing as much as they hated their previous job. That is why you need to wait until your freelance can provide financial support as your current job. I suggest not to move forward until freelancing cannot provide enough support as your current job. That is why it is important to put numbers into perspective. For your interest, it's not the amount of money you earn, but it's total output per hour. In this way, you can compare your income at your current job with the one from freelancing. For example, if you work two hours per day as a freelancer, you can always put it against one fourth of your income from your nine to five job. Also, don't forget to expenses such as medical and social insurance expenses that you need to cover at your own. If your freelancing outperforms a nine to five job for three months in a row, that this is a good sign and that means you can move on. In addition to that, you need continuity in your work. I recommend not turning into full-time freelancing until you have steady clients ideally two or three depending on your industry steady clients meaning reoccurring work steady income stability and self-confidence in addition if one of your client decides to discontinue services you can always rebalance your portfolio by putting additional work for other clients or search for a new one. So you are ready to transition to full-time freelancing, right? This is one more step, or I would say it's the final step that I would highly suggest that you should follow. And that is to create at least six months financial cushion. So let's recap five simple steps to become a successful freelancer. First, you must decide what services you're planning to offer. That something you must be interested in and also that something must be high in demand. Second, if it starts from scratch, gain knowledge by taking a course and establish yourself as an expert. Third, start freelancing to gain momentum and start building a stream of income that at least as profitable as your current job. Fourth, maintain steady clients. This will bring you stability and increase self-confidence. Fifth, create six months emergency fund to transition to dry season periods and allow you to dedicate yourself to find high ticket clients. I hope this video was helpful. Please see it, believe it, apply it, and I'm sure in a matter of time, you'll become a successful freelancer. If you are having trouble to find a job or if you're having a difficulty to become a freelancer, please check out my channel as there are plenty of videos, tools, techniques, and tips to find a new job or to how to become a freelancer. 
Once again, I wish you all the best and thank you for watching. Bye for now.